Hey everybody, this is Mad Panda Games here, and today we're going tackling Gehenna. Now, this isn't the third chapter, but this is actually a special Halloween special that the developers and creators released, I believe around two days ago. And so I'm really excited about this, because Gehenna is one of my favorite games to do on this channel. It gets a lot of people excited, and I want to see what this has to show us. So let's get started, guys. Okay. Welcome to Gehenna's Halloween special. Press enter or click the screen to continue. Please enter your name by typing with your keyboard. Uh, I'll just do Panda. The darkness of the bazaar is illuminated by dozens of tiny monochrome colors. Deep red lights bleed into the thick fog surrounding you. The usually bustling streets are now devoid of any life or sound. You breathe in the fresh, crisp air of seasons change, and northern winds whistle through the city streets. Ifrita's smooth voice breaks the whispering of the wind through the rafters as she turns to you, her hand placed firmly upon her hip. Dang, she looks gorgeous! What a lovely night to have a curse, and it seems I'm cursed with walking through this infantile maze. She appears to be very bored, despite the eerie surroundings. Whoa, I just noticed, hey, there's a cat there! Hello, cat! Okay, sorry. She purses her lips and sighs, her shoulders relaxing ever so slightly. But if it will please Son, then I will. It's fine. This is fine. This doesn't seem very fine. You yeah, see? Game gets it. She doesn't sound convinced. To your surprise, Ifrita extends her hand out to you. Well? Oh! Saving is always helpful. But of course I'm gonna take her hand. You don't refuse the Empress's hand. You waste no time in accepting the gesture and intertwine your fingers with hers. Despite her delicate looks, you can feel the strength in their grip as she leads you through the winding streets of the marketplace. Without another word, she begins to lead you through the winding streets of the marketplace. Wait, this is the same thing. The click, click, click of Frita's heels echo off the walls. Your body is on high alert, eyes darting back and forth as you search your surroundings. Long shadows creep up the monochrome walls, illuminated by the enchanted red lanterns that decorate the city. You hear sounds of ghoulish laughter in the distance. Suddenly a sharp sound erupts from behind you, and you turn as a spray of black feathers drifts down in front of you. Did something just die? You instinctively tighten your grip on Ifrita's hand. She gives you a side glance, eyes dancing with mischief. Oh, we're amusing to her. You get the sense that she's starting to thoroughly enjoy this. Ifrita scoffs turning quickly on her heel and picking up her pace. You catch up to her, only to find that your path out of the marketplace has been obscured by a barricade of boxes and carts. The harsh sound of a screech draws your attention towards the alleyway, which is massed in a thick layer of shadows. Only one way to go now. Oh, that's not ominous, or not. Oh, this is bad. Never go in alleyways. Ifrita remains silent, taking the lead into the dark alleyway. You notice the billowing of smoke wafting out from the darkness, obscuring your vision even more. You hear the ruffle of feathers again, followed by a shrill and bone-chilling call as a massive beaked figure emerges from the darkness. Is it death? It advances towards you with black feathers outstretched, beady avian eyes glaring right through you. This is death. It must be death. The creature lurches forward, ready to pounce upon you and Ifrita. His wings spread out, revealing an intimidating display of sharp obsidian feathers. Um, if we remain still, show that we're not scared of him. If we jump back, Ifrita might not enjoy this. Let's remain still. I think Ifrita would just bitch slap him. Cause she's, she's a badass like that. Oh. Okay. Good thing. You sidestep Alibaba and give him a grin. Maybe that scare would have worked on you if you hadn't helped him with it. Aha! Still, his costume is impressive. You hear a burst of laughter erupt from behind you. Alibaba's grin falters and he stands defeated. Ifrita giggles at the costume Lota. Ifrita shoes at Alibaba until he steps back into the light at the end of the alleyway, allowing you a better look at his costume. Judging by the sloppy stitching and random materials he used, Alibaba most certainly created it all by himself. What? It looks kind of cool! Raven? I don't know, he looks pretty awesome, so that's a clever costume. Did you guess what it is? I collected the feathers myself! 
Ifrita wipes out a tear of laughter and catches her breath before she speaks. My heart pities the poor crow that was subjected to your craft project. Ifrita turns to you, her face full of childish joy. If the spy master is going to fail so terribly, I can't wait to see what the other champions have come up with. What? I knew I didn't have a chance of scaring you. I was trying to make Panda scream. I suppose Panda is easily frightened by haphazard costumes and tight pants. Shall we continue? Isn't that just the greatest thing? That is what Halloween is. Haphazard costumes and tight pants. Let's definitely continue. You nod and continue through the labyrinth of streets, the sound of Alibaba's boots hitting the rafters fading into the distance. The shadowy world of the Onyx Quarter finally gives way to the wide streets of the Bronze Quarter. You can hear muffled laughter and the clinking of glasses in a nearby tavern, the only indication of life in the otherwise eerie quiet. The wind picks up, rustling up leaves and shaking wind chimes. You quicken your pace, looking into the deep alleyways for anyone who might jump out of you. You realize Ifrita is no longer following you. We lost the queen. We lost the queen. We're going to get beheaded. We're going to die. This cannot be good. This is the scariest thing so far. You turn back and retrace your steps, glancing down dark streets to try and locate her. The distinctive click, click, click of her heels leads you back to her. You find her standing before a ride rampart living up through the city. It seems to be a defensive wall that has fallen into neglect. Ifrita kicks a few loose stones out of the way. This rampart looks like it has been in disuse for many years. Someone disturbed it to draw your attention to it. Ifita climbs onto the platform of the rampart, and you follow close behind. The defensive wall rises a dozen feet above the city, watching over the quarters like a forgotten sentinel. Enjoy the viewer ask about the rampart. I mean, we kind of get what it is. Let's just enjoy the view. I feel as if they're trying to scare us. They're not doing a very good job so far. For a moment, you look over the lights of the city. The festivities have spread. The common folk celebrate their traditions with bright decorations, costumes, and parties. In the distance of the Silver Quarter, you catch, catch a glimpse of black feathers ducking behind a building. The rampart descends, leading you back into the streets. Something is wrong. The streets before you shift even as you watch them, changing shapes and pathways with wavering magic. You remember what this is. Zahn wasn't joking when he said he would be creating a maze. Oh, that's not good. A wail rips through the silence and overwhelms your ears, reverberating off the walls before finally fading away. The hairs on the back of your neck stand on end. Gods, what was that? Before you can even consider protesting, Ifrita is off without a second glance at you. Girl, can you stop leaving us? We're trying to protect you. I know you don't need protecting, but will you protect us? The twisting, morphing streets of the maze seem to swallow her up. You sigh, realizing that you must traverse the illusory, 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 illusory maze yourself to find her once again. You start to make out patterns in the shifting streets, making a mental map of dead ends and legitimate paths. You come to an intersection that stands still, despite the warping of the streets on either side. The sound of heavy footfalls come from the alley to your right. To your left, you catch a glimpse of white in the wind. Those footsteps are your best lead. You turn into the alley. Oh, we don't get to choose? In the distance, a shadow races past. You hear a low sound coming from behind you, like the whistling of the wind through the trees. But there are no trees here. You turn, only to be greeted with nothingness. You sigh and walk back, wondering if the flash of color had been another one of Zahn's illusions. A figure jumps out from behind the wall as you approach, hands raised high. Boo! Remain still, it's not, it's not scary. Oh yeah, oh, 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 that's adorable, that's adorable. You recognize the mismatched eyes, shining through the tiny holes cut into the sheet and muffle a laugh. You hear Afrita's laughter from behind you, and you turn to see she's appeared behind you to laugh at Noor. Oh Noor, this costume wouldn't even scare a child. What were you thinking, Habibi? You watch Noor shift between, beneath her costume in embarrassment. My apologies, Empress, but I was given very little time. Fali and Alibaba were too busy making their own costumes, and, well... Ifrita gives her a pitying pat on the shoulder. Don't worry too much, Nora. I'm not easily frightened. But perhaps Panda was scared. 
Not really. Not really. I wasn't scared, but you did lift my spirits. Noir and Ifrita groan in unison. You recall the strange occurrences before. The disembodied wailing, the shadows, and the sound of pacing footsteps. Although you did manage to pull off the atmosphere, how did you do that? Being in two places at once. And that wail from earlier, how did you do that? I'm not sure what you mean. Even if I wanted to do such a thing, this maze is confusing. It was a stroke of luck I managed to find you and sneak up at all. You let out a humorous laugh. Noor shrugs, finding no need to defend herself. That sound, the unearthly, hollow cry that still echoes in the back of your mind. Perhaps the general really hadn't been the one to make that sound. The only solution to this mystery is to delve deeper into the maze. Having the general around might provide some much needed protection if there is any real danger lurking within the maze. Will you tag along with us, Noor? The tips of her ears perk up from under the sheet. I thought you would never ask. Noor doesn't even spare a glance at the shifting labyrinth surrounding you, ready to accompany you without a second thought. Frankly, I don't feel safe wandering the streets alone tonight. Let's move. Yes, now we have two girls, gal pals. You come across many illusionary dead ends as you make your way through the labyrinth. On more than one occasion, you feel as though you're merely walking in circles. Any landmarks you find quickly get swept away. As you turn another corner, you run straight into another lost soul within Zon's maze. Oof. The figure squeaks and rubs at their head. You'd knock the wind right out of them. The sound of the squeak have been very familiar, however. Anka? Oh, ooh, ooh. Oh gosh, she's sexy. Why is everyone so sexy? Good evening, Panda. What are you doing here? I'm lost. Zon has invited me to the party at the palace. I'm sure I've been there before, but I can't seem to find my way. Zon has made the city into a maze for festivities. Oh, that sounds fun. I think I know some tricks to find my way through a maze, even a magical one. Would you like to accompany us, princess? No, thank you. Now that I know that this is a magical maze, I want to see if I can solve it on my own. Besides, it seems like someone in your party is eager to get a move on as well. She gestures behind you both, and you see Yafrita impatiently tapping her heel at you. Goodbye, Panda and Noah. I'll see you both at the party tonight. As Anka walks away from your group, you glance back at her, wondering if the princess would be alright. You see Noir looking the same way as you. She closes her eyes and sighs. She'll be alright. Enough of this. At this rate, the party will be over by the time we make it out of here. Do you have any suggestions? Ifita gives you a wry smirk. How much have you dabbled in divination magic? Uh... Uh... Interesting question. Only what I've read in books, I'm practiced at, nothing at all. Let's say, read in books. You can only get so far with dusty old books. Allow me to teach you a simple clairvoyance technique. It will lead you to your desired path. The key to any divination is visualization and intent. You must first visualize the desired path within your mind, fueling it with your intent, and then cast your magic out into the maze. Feel within yourself the true path, and you will realize you knew it all along. You concentrate, closing your eyes and visualizing the maze. The various paths begin to materialize within your mind. You steal your intent to find the correct path and allow your magic to flow out of you. Slowly, the divination comes to you as your magic seeps into the area surrounding you. You feel the tendrils of your magic searching, like an extension of yourself spreading out to feel at the corners of the room. Your spell obscures the wrong choices and the dead ends disappear within a dense fog. Oh cool! Your mind's eye senses the way forward with crystal clear intuition, and you know which way to go. The divination ends, and the vision fades away. The sensation of being watched is oppressive now, as if every eye in the city is on you at once. An unpleasant tingle runs down your spine as you lead the way through the labyrinth. You hear the distant sound of crumbling rocks behind you and paws in your tracks. You turn around. Ifrita has disappeared once again. Lady, stay with us! You slowly make your way back down the street, searching for the Empress. You catch a glimpse of Ifrita's familiar red hair within the darkness. She stands before a crack in the wall, the colors of her hair shifting as you watch her examine the entryway. 
Yes. You finally reach her, and when you do, you see your eyes light up like stars, wide and interested in whatever secrets this place may hide. Her voice is barely above a whisper, but you can sense the excitement in every word she utters. Let's go in! And if you can't hear me, let's go in! I don't mean to interrupt, but that does not seem like a good choice. Ifrita waves her off, rolling her eyes. I want to go. Uh, we can't really say no to the Empress. Let's go! You take a moment to gaze down to the tunnel, your eyes slowly adjusting to the darkness, yet all you see are narrow walls leading deep underground. Well, we don't have all night. You gather your courage and squeeze past the crevice. Ifrita follows close behind, excitement practically sparking off her. She snaps her fingers, conjuring a flame to illuminate the way. Nor isn't as keen, looking over her shoulder, on edge from every sound rever reverberating through the tunnels. The air around you grows cold and damp the further down you travel. A foul, dank scent permeates the air. I feel as if this is, this is really not the best idea. Can we turn around, please? Like, please? The tunnel widens and turns sharply. The walls are inscribed with an ancient form of Davamandian, and lost engravings depict ceremonial rituals and embalming processes. Oh, is this gonna be a mummy? I bet this is gonna be a mummy. A low, disembodied groaning fills the tunnels, reverberating off the walls before finally fading further into the darkness. Goosebumps forming your skin, the hairs on the back of your neck standing on end. Oh, the music changed. The music changed. You come to a massive door, almost like an entrance to a cathedral. The Imperial City holds many secrets in a history spanning generations. I want to know where we are. Where are we? What is this place? Your voice bounces off the walls, announcing your presence to whatever or whoever made that ghostly wailing sound. Ifrita presses her hand against the door, her long nails trailing across the faded engravings. She is silent for a time, as of deep in thought before responding. We are in the necropolis. These are the royal catacombs. Oh, that's not good. You'd heard of the catacombs in hushed whispers during your time spent within the court. From your eavesdropping, you gather the catacombs are under the city, spanning far and wide, becoming an inordinate labyrinth of bones and secrets. You know Zahn personally oversees the upkeep of the catacombs. Is this a part of his maze? Ifrita pushes the door open, which groans and creaks from centuries of neglect until finally opening. Oh, this place looks pretty, in a sense, if you like this stuff. There's a nice staircase in the corner, so that's nice. Eventually, you make your way through the winding tunnels, entering into a large room with a tall, geometric ceiling and spiraling stairwells. Immense columns carved from the natural limestone of the cavern hold up the foundation of the city above you. The cavern is illuminated only by the sparse candles placed across altars, railings, and tables. An inscription on the door that to your left reads, Asarium. You can sense something wrong, and you aren't intent on delving any deeper, but all signs seem to be directing you there. Heavy footfalls sound above you, louder than any person can muster. Suit and dust fall from the ceiling, settling on your costume. A, a blood-curdling cry rips through the necropolis, originating from the depths of the Osarium. The cries crack, morphing into a sinister laugh. Let me guess, we're going towards the horrible laughing sound. I don't see any other pathways out of here. I don't think we have a choice. Ifrita falls unnaturally silent, her lips pursed and brow furrowed in contemplation. As you approach, the crypt doors slowly creak open by an invisible force. The laughing abruptly stops. Inside the Osarium, rows upon rows of massive limbs and sarcophagi, sar sarcophagi? Sarcophagi! are tucked away within the walls. Everything is meticulously engraved and surprisingly pristine. Urns and chests full of the departed's belongings nestle beside the coffins, though you don't dare touch them. The reward for such disrespect would be a generational curse. You arrive in a circular room, an inner sanctum of sorts. Arcane torches cast a melancholic warm haze over the walls. You find yourself encircled by giant black sarcophagi, sarcophagi, engraved with tales of the departed's life, their accomplishments, their defeats, the legacy they left behind. Efrita runs her hand over one of the coffins, brushing away the dust. She gazes down at the inscriptions, a spark of watery familiarity within her eyes. As you watch her, 
Flashes of unfamiliar memories rush through your mind, showing you a life you've never lived. You feel the sting of betrayal, and then you taste blood. The vision fades as quickly as it came to you. You touch your nose where scarlet blood is beaded, dripping into your palm. Overwhelming dread washes over you. The door behind you slams shut, shaking the foundations. An inhuman roar reverberates through the ears. Then heavy footballs race through the tunnels, straight towards you. Run! You charge up the spiraling stairs, Ifrita whipping past you. Nora brings up the rear, sword in hand. Oh, this is old, oh, this is not good. When you reach the top of the stairs, you realize the only way forward is a narrow door. You reach the door handle, yanking at it, but it's locked. You're trapped. Nora pulls you aside and swings her sword at the wooden door, but despite the obvious strength in her blow, the door does not bear a single mark. Ifrita casts a fireball into, into the darkness below. Whatever hides within it screams in pain, yet its pursuit does not slow. The footfalls, glow, the footfalls grow closer, slamming their way up the staircase. Closer, closer, until it's maddeningly loud. You take one last glance down the stairway and immediately wish you hadn't. A skeletal face wrapped in rotting linen stares back at you with hollow eyes and a gaping, fanged maw. I knew it was a mummy! Rot and sinew hang from its exposed bone, and a spirit-crushing howl erupts from the depths of its throat. Suddenly, the ground breaks up open beneath the creature. A circle of consuming darkness surrounds it, and fire erupts from beneath. Is it going to hell? Oh, yeah, it's going to hell! Black tendrils shoot out from the void and grab onto it, pulling it into the hellish depths. You look to Afrita, who closes the portal beneath the monster. Burn down that door and get us out of here. You turn and throw your fist to the door, a cascade of flame erupting from you and disintegrating the door completely. Okay. Good for us. So I think I'm gonna stop here since we just, you know, escaped from a hell mummy. So let's save. And so this is Mad Panda signing out. If you like my content and you want to see more content like this, please remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell for notifications. Once again, this is Mad Panda signing out. See you later, guys.